Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. Um, we broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are this morning, and it is posted to our website for you to watch at your convenience, and I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access those recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in the show. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the um, Nebraska Library Commission here, we are the state agency for libraries in Nebraska, similar to your um, whatever state library. Uh, so we provide services to all sorts of libraries in our state, public, academic, K-12, um, corrections, museums, archives, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you will find shows, um, episodes on our show that will be for all types of libraries. Um, so you hope you should be able to find something for you. Um, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, uh, demos of services and products, all sorts of things are on there. Um, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do sessions on things that we're offering here through the commission, but we also bring in guest speakers from around the state, around the country, and that's what we have with us today. Um, on with us this morning, uh, we're going to be talking about um, education programs, getting your education programs leading to credentials in librarianship, as you can see there. Um, so hopefully all of you are interested in uh, becoming librarians like all of us. <laughs> um, and on the line with us this morning is uh, Dr. Sarah Churchill from the University of Nebraska at Omaha. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Uh, Dr. Judy Henning, who's the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Good morning, Good morning. Judy. And Dr. Becky Pasco, who's um, recently retired, yay, <laughs> uh, from University of Omaha. <laughs> Good morning, Becky. Good morning. And um, I think I'll just hand it over to you guys to tell us all about um, what we need to know about um, getting our library degrees here, um, what programs we're going to be talking about. And I think, Sarah, you're starting off, I assume? I don't know. Yep. Excellent. Thank you very much, Krista. Um, it's great to be on and great to see so many people interested. Obviously, uh, we are passionate about libraries and um, how they can serve our communities, serve our kids, and how they can really make an impact. And so um, we're excited to see so many people who are also interested in joining this profession that we're so passionate about. Um, we are as Krista said, going to be talking about education programs leading to credentials and librarianship. Um, this will be focused quite a bit on Nebraska specifically. However, there will be similar programs in um, all the states. So um, this will give you kind of a general overview. And then certainly for more specific details in your state context, you can reach out to either university programs um, like what Dr. Henning and I are in charge of, or to a library commission um, like, like Krista works for. So um, we are going to um, give you that general introduction, like I said, just kind of an overview of what you might expect if you're looking for credentials in librarianship. And we're gonna talk a lot about the school side of things because that's Dr. Henning and I's focus, but we do um, touch on some of the other um, areas as well. And we know that everybody's situations are unique and different and we all bring um, a wealth of experiences to whatever we do. So what, um, if you have specific questions about programs, we are going to give you this link to a chart that has contact information for all of the programs. So you will be able to reach out to the people in charge of the programs and talk more specifically about details and about your context and your situation. Um, this is going to be just a general overview. Um, I'll also jump in and mention here um, to, to everyone, so you know, um, these slides and then links to anything that's in here like that um, uh, page will be included in the archive in the recording afterwards. So we'll send you links to all of that. So if you don't get anything you know, scribbled down right now, that's okay. You'll, all, you'll have it later too. Absolutely. Okay. 
So we're going to start by talking about being a school librarian. As I said, that's Dr. Henning and I's specialty. So that's what we're going to focus on first. Um, in order to become a school librarian, the first requirement is that you have to be a certified teacher um, from any accredited college of education. Um, despite the uh, stereotypes that somewhat still persist a little bit, um, school librarians don't just sit and read and check in, books in and out all day. Neither do public librarians, but school librarians spend a good portion of their day teaching students from PK to 12, depending on their settings, um, and sometimes all of those ages. So being a master teacher and understanding best practices in teaching is truly crucial to our role. And that's why you will find um, in most states, in most accredited programs, that, that you have to be a certified teacher before you can get your school librarian endorsement. Then the next portion of that is getting a school library endorsement. Um, once you have that school library endorsement added to your teaching certificate, then you are qualified to be a school librarian um, in, in a school. Um, and in the state of Nebraska, um, we're gonna talk about all the different, um, the program that will get you that endorsement in just a moment. Dr. Henning, do you have anything you want to add there? You know, I just wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, uh, the 20th, uh, the 20th century librarian, school librarian, and the 21st. You know, with with technology, um, it has freed up uh, the school librarians' time a lot. We're, we're no longer spending lots of time managing a collection by ordering new materials and things like that. We still do that, but it's not as time consuming. We don't have to file the cards and process the materials, that has become a lot easier. So we take the time to become a um, instructional leader. We go into the classroom and we help the uh, 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 teachers work on collaborative research projects. And in order to do, you know, uh, so we, we have to be um, somewhat flexible and, and knowledgeable on, like you said, best practices, uh, strategies that we can use to increased student academic achievement. So I, I know some people out there might say, oh, but you know, I can I can easily learn that. That's that's something that that you have to go um, to college and learn classroom management. You have to learn teaching strategies. You have to learn um, lots lots of things to make it work. And um, uh, so I, I just wanted to stress that the the collaboration with the classroom teacher is key to a uh, being a good school librarian and i know i said a school librarian is is an uh, instructional leader a lot of times you know they don't go into the school library and have the, the uh, administrator say oh you're an instructional leader they have to be on the school improvement team they have to do the um uh professional development for the teachers maybe on new applications that they can integrate into their curriculum. So it's something that they, they have to work on, but uh, a good school librarian is an instructional leader. Very key. Uh, Rule 24 in the state of Nebraska are the guidelines that um, govern the endorsements and what's required of endorsements. And so in Nebraska, what is required is 30 semester hours of coursework. And that coursework encompasses a lot of the things that Dr. Henning and I just mentioned. Um, leadership in term, you know, in terms of working with administrators, in terms of working with those teachers and collaborating, collaborating with those teachers, advocacy, you know, we work with a huge range of diverse student needs. And so we have to be able to understand those needs and advocate for those students. Library administration um, and then resource management down below, those two things can incorporate some of those um, concepts that Dr. Henning first mentioned about uh, trying to organize the materials and ordering the materials and selecting them. But it also includes things like working with paras and um, planning programming and things like that. Technology is certainly a huge portion of what we do these days. Many school librarians are 
technology leaders in their building, often they're the technology leader in their building. And we are very much looked to for best practices in how to integrate technology into learning and staying what's on the forefront of technology. And so that becomes a big part of our curriculum as well. Information access, um, again, advocating for those needs for all of our diverse learners and trying to get them access. And certainly in the pandemic, this has been even more of a topic than it was before um, because we're seeing gaps in access and what our students and our staff can access. Children's and young adult lit, that is certainly an area where people get really excited. They love the literature and they love the reading. That's the chance we get to actually read those books. But it also involves promoting reading um, and understanding the different strategies that you can use to engage readers and build that lifelong love of reading that is so crucial to becoming um, a productive citizen. We also take courses in resource, resource management, um, as I mentioned before, and then certainly curriculum and instruction, like we have already emphasized um, already several times, understanding curriculum and content, not just ours, but also the entire school, because we are responsible for making sure that we have the materials that meet the needs and that materials can be integrated into the curriculum. So um, with my managing collections class this semester, for example, we have um, in our textbook a chart that they, um, they see where all of the different subjects are plugged in and then the main topics that all of the teachers across all of the subjects study with their students so that the school librarian can then make sure that they are finding places to collaborate with the teachers, finding resources that support those needs. Um, and that was very eye-opening, I think, for many of my students to see that chart and how ultimately we're responsible for understanding everybody's curriculum and not just ours. Dr. Henning, anything you wanna add there? No, uh, communication is key to all of this uh, and, you know, uh, making sure that the classroom teacher and you have um, uh, good communication as to what they're going to need if they, and, and you are, uh, the school librarian is on uh, big when they change their textbook or their curriculum, you know, we have to be there to make sure that all of our print and digital resources um, uh, meet their needs for uh, what they will need, need with the new curriculum, so. Excellent. Uh, can I step in here, Sarah? Yes, please, Dr. Pasco. All right. Um, this says 30 semester hours in library courses, and what you'll find if you look around Nebraska and the country, Nebraska is really, um, really um, lucky to have two nationally recognized programs. And to get nationally recognized, truly, you gather five to seven years of data about everything you do, <laughs> turn it in, and it's a long process. And so good for UNK and good for UNO for both going through that process and, and being nationally recognized. And, and uh, But in general, what I'd like to say is these 30 semester hours cover these concepts generally. <laughs> Kearney or what Northern Iowa or what Central Oklahoma or what in any of those programs around the country call that course will be different. Like some will call it young adult lit, some will call it adolescent lit. We have a whole variety of technology courses. Kearney has a whole variety of technology courses. So um, I guess what I'd say is those 30 semester hours won't look the same but we'll cover the same concepts. So when you go out shopping and, uh, and looking, know that um, there is some alignment, uh, but, but uh, we all run our programs a little differently. And, and, and um, so uh, don't be surprised if, if it looks like there's a great deal of difference, but you can be assured that both Kearney and UNO cover those concepts in one of their courses that just might have a name that might be named differently. So that's all I had to say. 
Well, and that's a good point um, that to say that although this is specifically Nebraska's rule governing governing um, our program, we also are tied so closely with that national recognition program that you know we have guidelines from the American Association of School Librarians that are are giving us um, we have standards of what school library preparation programs should cover. And so um, these aren't just concepts that we just randomly picked yeah. out. <laughs> so um, they are tied to national standards um, developed by experts who have been long in the field. So um, as I mentioned before, if you are going to be in a school library in the state of Nebraska, you do need to have the school librarian endorsement. However, there are some special circumstances. And so there are some exceptions to that. Um, this is currently called Rule 10. Um, Dr. Henning and I just spent time in a meeting yesterday where we learned it's going to get a new, it, it's going to be revised. So in the next year, <laughs> um, this will name will change. So if you're looking for it, it might be called something else. But um, any person, who wants to have a school library job, like I said, you should have the endorsement, unless you get an exception and you put six credit hours each year towards that endorsement. So you can be placed in a school library, as long as you're a certified teacher, um, as long as you're working towards the library endorsement. Um, six credit hours per year would generally be two classes. So, um, as long as you're you're moving that direction towards the endorsement, then you can be in a school library. So we um, we have a lot of people who uh, will get their provisional school library endorsement and then continue working to finish that, um, but they'll be able to be an active school librarian. I'll step in here again, Sarah, just for a second. Please. Um, so let's say. Um, like um, an opening comes up in August and a principal sitting out there going, well, it's so late in the summer and where would I find somebody? And I don't know if I'll get candidates, et cetera. You know, and what they, when they call me with that and they say, oh, Becky, what am I going to do? I don't have, you know, I just say, you find the best teacher you have because she's going to work with every grade, every kid, et cetera. And I said, and by rule 10, because schools get dinged, if they don't meet these requirements and they don't want to have a black mark on their record. But as long as they can find a master teacher, as long as that master teacher takes six hours, two classes a year and works towards that endorsement, they can um, they can um, hire that person. And so this special circumstance um, works in favor of districts who end up with last minute openings that don't have lots of candidates. And uh, it's better to have somebody who who's always wanted to do this, but never thought about getting started, this gives them a way to do so. And um, they end up with a good school librarian who's a master teacher that can begin right away. And so uh, it's a, not all endorsements have this privilege and we do. And uh, so it's a nice way for, so some, for some of you who are considering school libraries um, to know that they, your district has this exception and can use it, so. I also want to mention yeah. that you said uh, get dinged. Uh, what that means is, you know, these schools all have to be accredited by the Nebraska Department of Education. And if That's you don't right. have that position in place, that is what the black mark will be. So right. it's it, when they're searching for their state accreditation that they have to have all this taken care of. And really, six hours is not a lot. And, <laughs> uh, you know, to to do. And I mean, they're they're very understanding. So yes yes and i will also add that uh, both unk and uno have very flexible programs for adult learners um, and mm -hmm. lots of options online for coursework as well so um, we have we try to really meet the needs of uh, our candidates so We do have, we're going to, um, in a few minutes, we're going to show you a little bit more about that instructional component that we were referring to earlier. Dr. Henning has some lesson plans um, to show you examples of what kind of 
um, work may be expected in terms of designing instructional content. Um, but we are, before we get there, we're going to move on to the other programs. Um, if you need to contact either one of us, our contact information will be on that handout that we shared, um, but it's also here for you as well. And you certainly can reach out to either Dr. Henning or myself, and we can walk you through our specific programs. We can take a look at where you're at with your education and what you may be interested in and what your goals are. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about special public and academic libraries and credentials that would lead you to librarianship in those fields. Um, and I, I don't know, do, do you think we need to define special public and academic? Nope. Okay. <laughs> um, for, uh, if you are interested in your associate's degree, um, or a certification program, Central Community College in Nebraska has a program. Um, I'm going to let Dr. Pasco maybe fill you in a little bit more about these programs. You know, if you've never gone to college and um, and you're thinking, oh, it's so expensive, or I, you know, I don't know, can I do this? I'm a, you know, I'm a parent. I'm a, I work 40 hours a week. Can I, you know, this program um, is a great way to get started certainly um uh you can get either they have the option of either a full two-year associate's degree which you can transfer right to any four four-year degree uh in the country and they have a certificate program and um both d johnson who's at central community college and marty mcgee who kind of um, works with all the instructors and the coursework would be glad to talk to you about this program we have many uh, small rural libraries whose directors come directly out of this program because they too, the same people who teach in this program often teach in our programs. Um, and they'll cover the same kinds of concepts of leadership and advocacy and resource management and collections that the uh, um, master's level um, programs do. But this is, we are so lucky as a state to have this. There are only, uh, I think, 32 states in the country that have a two year option available to their residents but i mean for the money i would tell you that um if you talk to d or marty this is a great place to dip your toe in and and see if you can you know how you in, with your time management system you know how that works so all right Another option are library science education undergraduate programs um, which you would earn a bachelor's degree in. Um, we have one at the University of Nebraska Omaha that is fully online. And it has, again, very similar coursework to what we have been um, discussing so far, leadership, advocacy, management, literature, all those different aspects. Um, and like I said, that program is fully online from UNO. And Erica Rose is the program coordinator for that and she would be your contact and she is happy to uh, take any messages or emails about the program. Let me talk about this just a little bit. Let's say you've um, lived around the country. We have lots of folks who have lived to lots of places, maybe been married to a vet, you know, a veteran, I should say, <laughs> you know, in the armed services. And Erica daily works with people who have six hours from some community college in Alaska and nine more hours from some community college in Florida. And, you know, and she, what she does is she puts all of those scraps together and puts together a plan of study for you that will get you a four year undergraduate um, bachelor's degree in library science. And so if you've just dabbled trying to find out what you wanted to be when you were growing up, <laughs> You know, Erica um, talks that with talks about that with lots of people um, every day, and so feel free to contact her, or again, or to contact the the two year community college um, program. Also takes transfers in um, coursework and content from all over the country. So, you know, I think some people say, "Well, I don't, I don't have anything. I don't know," and you might have more than you think. You know, lots of times I think it's just getting started going to college at any level that's daunting and you think, my gosh, this pandemic, this, 
you know, how will I afford it? How will I manage that end of my time? I think the, the only real crime here is if you don't call them and, and check it out. You know, if, if really we have fabulous folks, all leader, leaders in our um, library associations and in our public academic and special libraries who came directly out of these two and four year libraries and gained the confidence and figured out, took time to figure out their money and, and how to proceed. Um, and so get started. And um, if libraries is in your heart, then lucky you and Nebraska have all these options. You know, so thank you, Sarah. And uh, that dovetails nicely into what I was going to say to wrap this up. I just want to remind you again that although we've focused on Nebraska programs, there are programs like this in states all around the country. And Absolutely. so he is finding the person to talk to. Um, and so reach out to your local university or college and find out um, who's in charge of the program there. Um, see if your state has a library commission. Um, Krista, does that, I didn't think about that, but is there a, a link to a database or something that would have all the state, different state commissions or anything? Oh, oh, um, good question. I, I should know that, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I, just, I would imagine that you can find a list of those. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, here in Nebraska, we're, um, we have to be specialized in many things. Um, like I had mentioned when I was introducing the show, your whatever state library, you know, New York State Library or um, Missouri State Library, whatever, those would be the, say, the organizations to go to to look for what the state is offering. Here in Nebraska, we're just called the Library Commission because that's what they called us. Yep. Could have been called the state library. So look for whatever your state library is or, you know, in your state, what would be the similar level? And we do have a link. The other place to, to start to look um, is the list of ALA accredited programs. Yes. And we do have a link to that on the chart, the flyer um, that we have linked you to and we'll link you to when we send out the, the recording information. Um, so that's another good place to get started. If you pick um, somewhere off of that list um, that's in your state, that they would be able to at least point you in the direction if nothing else. Okay. Um, oh, look, there it is. <laughs> I just needed to hit click. There's the list um, to the ALA accredited programs that I just mentioned. Um, oh. That will give you uh, more information about programs that have masters in library science, um, which that is a lot of times a, a um, an expectation in public libraries for leadership positions, not necessarily always, but um, your master's in library science goes by a variety of, of different acronyms there. And that ALA accredited programs list will lead you in that direction. Right. Sarah, if I can hop in here. Yep. Many yep. of those, you know, um, I think there are 20, well, there are 62 accredited programs around the country, and some states have multiple programs, and some states have none. Nebraska does not have um, an, ML, uh, an MLS program, but we have worked closely with uh, Emporia and Missouri over the years. Um, but you have access because of the online nature of many of these programs. We have people, I work with people who are, who are going to, gosh, programs in California and Pennsylvania and programs in Louisiana and programs. So you have, the world is at your feet. So if you're looking to acquire an MLS, this is the list. Make sure they're accredited by ALA and uh, you can proceed from here, so. All right. Um, now we're gonna circle back. We wanted to put this at the end just to make sure we had enough time to talk about um, what we needed to talk about. We had mentioned how important it is to have that grounding in best practice for education for school librarians. Um, and so what we have here are some examples of um, some lesson plans. They're, they're even more in depth than just a normal lesson plan. Um, but that Dr. Henning will walk you through to kind of show you an example of what we expect of our school library candidates. Mm -hmm. And, and before I get started, I, wa I want to backtrack a little bit. Uh, they just showed you the link to the um, 
uh, MLS programs, masters in library science across the nation. And, and, and I'm going to stress that typically those are geared for people who want to go into the public library setting. I want to tell you a little story about someone who um, decided while she was in college, she did not want to be a teacher. Both her parents were teachers, and so, but she wanted to be in a library. So she went, I think, to Missouri and got her, her MLS. And I met her when she was doing a, a practicum at the Carney Public Library. Her name is Stephanie Green, and I uh -huh. got her approval to mention her in this webinar. Um, she was. Uh, she had the kids doing an activity where they were they were in a contest baking and and decorating a cake um, that showed their their favorite book for the summer. A uh, real cute idea. And she, I talked to her there, and she says, you know, she goes, I think I I think I might be interested in being a uh, school librarian. And I said, well, you do have to get your teaching endorsement. Now, what she did was she went to UNK. And, you and, and she already had an English major, but no teaching certificate. And she went through what we have here at UNK, and I know um, UNO also has kind of a fast track system. I'm not sure what it's called, but ours is called the transitional program. And she went to the transitional program. And uh, once you get accepted and, and have a, a program of study, um, you can teach at a, you have a provisional teaching endorsement that you can have at a school, even though you have not finished all your teaching. So you can go through the TPC, um, uh, uh, Transitional Certification, sorry, TCP, Transitional Certification Program, and she got her endorsement. And then after that, she went to UNL or UNO and got her um, school library endorsement added to that teaching certificate. <laughs> now, was that a big ordeal? She says, yes, it was. She goes, I wish, wish, wish I had when I was an undergraduate, just got my, my uh, teaching certificate, but she said she didn't. So when she finally decided she wanted to do that, she had to go back and, and take her practices core, her pra practice subject assessment. And then when she was in the uh, library program, she had to take the practice uh, praxis library media specialist assessment. So <laughs> she said that was a long way around to get to do what she's doing, but I'm so glad she's doing it because I knew when she was at Kearney High School, I was the school librarian there at that time, that she was an outstanding English teacher. Uh, she did a great job and then she went and uh, after I retired and, and went full-time at UN, UNK in the library program here, uh, she actually um, uh, took my position and, and is doing a great, great job there. And so um, it's, it, you know, if you do have an MLS, it is possible to go back and get that teaching certificate and then add the endorsement. It's kind of a big deal. I mean, there's a lot of things you have to do, but but it can be done. So, um, any uh, Sarah, any additions to that? I know I know that there's yeah. a fast track system at UNO also. Yeah, and I don't know why I didn't think to mention this earlier because I have it in my notes, but um, we do have an accelerated teaching program as well. So if you have your um, undergraduate degree in a different area, um, whether it's science or, or, yes, or English yeah, or mm -hmm. whatever, um, we do have an accelerated program as well that will get you your teaching certificate in a condensed amount of time. Um, and then you can certainly add the school library endorsement onto that um as part of that so okay so um you know i've already talked to you about being an instructional leader when you are in the classroom uh in the school and um, that's that's so apparent when you are collaborating with your um, classroom teachers on project-based or research projects uh that the students are doing you know at, right now we are at a point where um we are doing a lot more student-centered um, research or student-centered projects. Um, the students become more autonomous. They take ownership of their learning, um, and and school I, and because this is this teaching strategy is so effective, uh, school librarians are busy with their classroom teachers uh, taking the time to. I mean, classroom teachers have a lot on their plate, and so by collaborating uh, with the school librarian, we are able to um, allow them some extra time or an extra person in the classroom. So um, I, I just cannot stress the importance of, of uh, the instructional part 
of being a school librarian. So um, there are three different um, there are three different uh, lesson plans. Now these are lesson plans from um, my uh, kind of my last class, uh, TE 893, which is a um, a um, field experience class. And this is these are some of the lesson plans that the students had to do when they were doing their field experience. Now. When you look at these, there's a lot in there. Like there's, uh, uh, they identify all the AASL standards that the students um, have to, uh, that the that the uh, lesson will um, address. So that is something that is um, uh, probably not something that you have to do every time you do a research project. But in my class, I wanted them to do it so that they were aware of how these standards fit in to their instruction. So, um, uh, you know, I talked about, uh, I, I have always felt that school librarians need to be um, uh, married to technology. The classroom teacher does not have the time to um, see what's out there um, and, and, and let the teachers know how this can be integrated into their curriculum and um, be part of it. So um, the, um, the, the technology aspect is, is a big one. And two of these uh, projects use PictoChart, um, and, and it's just another way of, of, of changing up the um, artifact that the students will come up with. So, you know, back in the day, all we had were research papers that came out of here. Now we have slide presentations, we have video projects, we have um, picto charts, we have uh, different different things that the apps that the students are using um, to to uh, showcase what they have learned. So, um, uh, Sarah, I have a uh, can. Are those actually links that you can click on to show these? Yes. Yeah. Are they? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Click on the middle okay. one, can Sarah. I click on whichever one Dr. Henning wanted me to click on. <laughs> Pioneer Infographics. Would you click on that one? Yep. There we go. I love these infographic things. You get so creative uh, when they get so creative with them. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, there is, this is, remember, this is a collaborative project uh, with the school librarian and a classroom teacher. Um, and this particular one is grade four and is, and as, most educators know grade four is when you are looking at Nebraska history. Um, all teachers need to look at the state content and benchmarks and indicators uh, for learning, and that is identified here. And then, like I said, the AASL standards, again, I don't think you'd have to do this for every single lesson, but it's nice when they're doing it for me so that they can be aware of the domains of thinking, creating, and sharing. Um, and growing, and then how those go with the foundations of inquire, include, collaborate, curate, explore, and engage. Now, you know, um, if you didn't have, also, if you didn't have the background in education, you wouldn't know about all the different assessments that you have to do. In this particular, in this particular um, assignment, they have to do a pre-assessment to see what the students already know. Um, and then um, after the after the class, they will do a post assessment. But you also have to know what a formative assessment is and what a summative assessment is. And those those are things that you get through your um, educational studies. You want to scroll down just a little bit there. Okay, this is a uh, this is the activities that the students will do. This is a fourth grade unit where they're going to um, compare and contrast uh, uh, what uh, the uh, settlers in the uh, early in the Midwest, what things they did, um, uh, and compare it to uh, what uh, they do to this in this uh, this day. Now, uh, this was um, they used the KWL again. That's a teaching strategy, a best practice to uh, record notes. Um, they include online resources, which in this case is World Book Online, um, and so and then they use the app. A picto chart to um, come up with uh, what uh, a graphic example of what it was like to be a um, uh, pioneer in the Midwest. So um, there's so this is if you keep going down it, it they have to curate the materials for the students both print and digital. Okay. 
Um, and then this is more about the AASL standards. Again, I don't know if you have to do that every time, but this indicated that all the students had met those standards. Um, then we have a rubric for the infographic. Um, and this is an important thing to know that when you have, um, that you have, you know, you want to make sure the students are graded fairly. Um, and a lot of things that are in um, our area are, are a bit subjective. So having a rubric for an uh, infographic is a great idea. And here's an example of one. I'm going to keep going. Okay. Uh, we, I also have them take the time to uh, reflect on the planning that they had to do with the uh, classroom teacher. Um, this is so important in the collaborative process. And there, there are a lot of roadblocks that sometimes you have to overcome, such as finding um, um, planning time, that uh, time when you're both available. Uh, now on the secondary level in Nebraska, most of the school librarians, that's the middle school and the high school, are on a flexible schedule. And that means that they um, can, um, uh, you know, they schedule stuff in and they don't have a fixed class that they have to have to teach. Whereas uh, elementaries, a lot of elementaries in Nebraska, unfortunately, are on a fixed schedule. And that fixed schedule means that they have to teach the um, multiple literacies uh, standards, in, informa uh, uh, internet safety, um, all those are uh, uh, taught usually in the elementary during a fixed time with the school librarian. Now, what does that mean for collaboration? It means that sometimes you just don't have the time available to collaborate on research projects. So, um, so this, uh, so I had them go through and, and talk about this uh, with a, with their uh, cooperating teacher, not cooperating, collaborative teacher, and and then uh, also to evaluate how they could improve um, what they taught. And if you keep going down a little bit. I have them show me some examples. Uh, that, that's an example of the worksheet they have to complete. This is fourth grade. And then they showed some examples of the project, the infographic that they actually had. So um, uh, this is just one example of how a, you can collaborate with the classroom teacher and is a big, big part of, our, um, of, of what we do. So let's see. Um, is there anything else? I mean, there. Uh, I try to get grade one, grade four, and grade nine, so you can see the different areas. Uh, I, when I went back and looked, there was infographics for both grade four and grade nine, but that could easily be changed to a research paper for the for the ninth grade students. Um, you know, we're we're kind of the school librarian is also the uh, copyright expert. I say that kind of, um, I mean, people go to them and ask them, you know, about copyright and ethical use of information. And we're also kind of the pro when it comes to whatever style they use, MLA or APA style in their school. Um, so. Lots of stuff that, that we have. To Sarah, is there anything I missed? We don't just sit and read. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Excellent. So thank you. And you will have access to those um, via a link so that you can um, take a look at those in more depth if you want. Um, we wanted to make sure that we saved time for questions. Again, you'll have all this contact information for everybody so you can reach out with specific questions about um, your particular situation or particular programs. Um, but if there are any other questions we can answer, um, I don't know if, if any have come through, Krista, or... Yeah, yeah. let's see. Um, yes, yeah, so anybody, if you had any questions about any of the programs, um, as we said, this is um, specific um, to Nebraska, because uh, that's where we are. Um, but I know so some of you are not here from Nebraska, and that's okay. You can still ask general questions about things. But if you are um, wanting more information about any of these, you know, um, type into the question section. Uh, let us know uh, what you want to know more about, um, what your thinking is on getting your degrees, and whichever type of degree you may be looking for, and um, what you're interested in. Um, yeah, and there's the that first document that we mentioned that we'll have, um, is, the links will be in the slides for. Right. Uh, I, I would interject here that you will get the best information about the two-year and associate's degree program from Dean Marty. 
and you'll get the best information from Erica about that four-year bachelor's degree uh, and um, all of your some the states that have MLS um, degree programs um, certainly will be on that list and so um, while we might be able to answer some general questions for those programs your best sources are those people on the list there so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we've had I, I should mention um, those names are familiar to me of course they've all of them have been on Encompass Live for other topics sometimes they, the, the program related sometimes other yeah. things Erica D and, and Marty all of them yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely Krista thank you um, all right, we do have our. Um, we have a question before, but I'm going to ask this one here. Ah, if you are already working, so Heather wants to know if you have, are already working in a library but don't have a degree, what is the best degree to start with? I, I'll interject here. Unless, I'm just going to punt that one to you anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I always chat with people about what's your flavor. You know, I know that sounds funny, but if you're thinking about I love to work with kids, or I never want to work with kids. That would change what I would suggest to you. You know, um, uh, if it would, if you want to work with kids, you can do that both in a school library or as as a youth services um, li librarian in a public library. And so you have opportunities to do that either place. And so we would talk about the programs that would get you. We would compare the programs that would get you your goal so that you could make a good um, decision. But if you have, if you've never gone to college at all, you have no college credit, boy, I'd hop right on that community college um, program and all those credits transfer right into the four year um, bachelor's program. But get started, figure out. I know lots of people say, oh, how could I do this? I'll never, I said, you'll never have more money, you'll never have more time. That is a myth. We all did it when we were in the midst of 7,000 things. You know, Krista, you, Judy, you, Sarah, did anything slow down when you decided to do this? No. So yeah. um, I would tell you for the buck, that is cheap college credit and mm -hmm. good learning. And I would start there and get yourself figured out. And then if you decide, wow, I'm on a roll here, then move into that four year, you can get, you know, you don't have to have uh, an undergraduate degree in library science to go into an MLS no. program, but um, this will I give you, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so this will give you a great background though for those concepts that you'll run into. Mm -hmm. So if I were going to start, the best bang for my buck would be at that community college level, and Marty and Dee can talk to you about that. You'll mm -hmm. be done in about a year with a certificate, in two years with the entire degree. And then, gosh, Judy, I'll love to see you. Sarah, I'll love to talk to you down the road. You know, it'd be nice to come into even a school library program with some sense of librarianship. You know, that'll give you some context for the discussions. So, but if you've never put together a program, that might be your best place to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say, anyone going into libraries to get your MLS, if you're going to end up there, you can come from all sorts of areas. I was, um, my undergraduate degree is in English uh, with a specialization in Irish literature and folklore, just cause. <laughs> and um, and then I went to do my MLS. They, it, you can be any, do anything and jump right into there when you decide, oh, that is what I actually wanna do once you figure out where you're going in life, yeah. You know, I think sometimes you think, well, what would a community college degree get me if I want to work on an academic library? I would tell you that many of the people at those front lines desks that look at it over the circulation desk, that look at you over that reference desk, that look have two year associate's degrees because mm -hmm. the other um, master's level candidates are doing other things with um, around campus in terms of uh, teaching and learning. So I would tell you, we have lots of candidates in both those programs who are working successfully in special and public and and uh, academic libraries in a variety of positions yeah. where they could, that, that give them real context for what they're learning. So don't, you know, don't be afraid to just hop in. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to, the, the master's degree does not have to be what you're going for. You don't have to go to that if you don't want to, you can still right. do some of these. That's why we have the bachelor's and associates because those yeah. are useful for, for thing for as well, yeah. You know, and there's a lot of library leadership around Nebraska, um, and I won't shout out names here, but there are many leaders in our 
professional associations and in our different kinds of libraries that, that come right out of that community college um, mm -hmm. program and kept going. So good for you. Yeah. Um, anybody have any other questions? Type them in. Um, there's one here from earlier that I was going to address, but I want to see if anybody had anything else you want to ask of um, Sarah, Judy, and Becky while we're here. Go ahead and type your questions in. Um, we've got at least five minutes left of this hour, but we did start a little late because of our weird technical things. So um, we will go as long as it takes to answer all of your questions that you guys may have. Um, anything um, our presenters want to say, um, we'll keep going and keep recording. Um, we don't get cut off just right at the top of the hour. Um, so do um, if you do have to um, take off because you only allotted an hour for this, that's fine. You can always come back and watch the rest of the recording later. Which I'm going to have to do because I have an 11 o'clock meeting, but it's great to see my my buddy Judy, it's really good to see you and search. I see you every day, talk to you every day. So, uh, and Krista, thanks again. It's wonderful to work with you and I'll see you guys around. But feel free to email me or any of these good people in front of you and, and we'll answer your questions as we can. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye-bye. That was going to be my emphasis that, um, you know, reach out and, and talk to somebody and get, you know, it doesn't hurt to ask questions and um, find out a little bit more about your specific situation. So um, I highly encourage you to reach out um, to any one of us listed on that um, on that handout. Mm -hmm. very, I also I, wanted to mention that, um, you know, when you are, you know, if you are an endorsed teacher and you're out there teaching and, and you get into the programs, and I'm sure, I, Sarah, I'm not sure how yours works, but um, this is an opportunity for you to get a master's degree. Um, there's two at, at UNK. You can get a master's degree in instructional technology with school library emphasis, which gets you your endorsement or um, curriculum and instruction with a school library endorsement. Now, some people already have their master's, and so they come here and instead they get the endorsement only, and they can do that also. So um, all, again, like Sarah, like Sarah said, you just have to um, figure out what you know, where you're at, what you need, and and let us know. We'll do what we can to get you get you going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have lots of master's options as well. Um, and endorsement options that we can tack on. Um, our ITL endorsement is one that lots of our library, ITL instructional technology leadership is one that lots of school librarians um, do in addition to their um, school library endorsement. And it's not that far off from the school library endorsement to a master's. So most of our candidates, if they don't already have a master's, um, go on to complete their master's as well. Yeah, and that's so important if you're teaching because that dictates your salary. So you want to you want to move over on the pay scale as quickly as you can. So yep, absolutely. Um, all right, we have one other question here that I was going to address. Um, and I just want to preface this with um, the description for today's session was about you know education programs leading to credentials and librarianship, and specifically said we were talking about education and getting your associates, bachelor's and master's degrees. So actually getting those degrees. However, we have a question that is um, very interesting and is something luckily here in Nebraska that we do address. Um, and the question from Lee was, what about non-librarian credentialing? Um, and for those of us already working in libraries on what we make, the cost of such credentialing really is a negative. Um, so basically talking about what if, what, what can you do if you can't afford going into actual college courses and things like that, and um, going to UNK, UNO, or any other universities. Um, I think Becky kind of talked about that when she talked about the um, uh, community college, um, and, and mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not an expert on that. I know it's available, but I'm not an expert, but usually the community college classes are very reasonable. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. They are, and that's what, like, like Dr. Pasco said, a great way to get started is figure, like, if you've never gone to college, sometimes just going to college is intimidating. Like, what is all that? Oh, it's such a huge thing. Well, community college is a way to just get kind of sneak in. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely um, a way to get started. But what we actually have here in Nebraska, talking about. Um, this is non-librarian credentialing. Here in Nebraska and in many states across the country, we have lots of, we have 
here in Nebraska, 270 something public libraries, and many of them in very, very rural areas. And many of them, because of their being rural, small areas, do not have the MLS requirement for their library directors. They do not, there's just no way they would get anybody who has that kind of a degree. And as you were talking, Judy, about, you know, if you get these credentials and degrees, you can get a better pay. There's just, there's just not, it's not going to happen. People in small rural towns, someone with a master's degree in library science, unless they're just going home to live there, they're not going to be looking for that. And the library is not going to be able to pay them something commensurate to that. Um, but there are other options of being able to learn and educate yourself about being a librarian. Um, and you don't have to have a degree to be called a librarian. And it's, it's, that's, but um, I'm going to pull the presenter control back to my screen because I want to share with you guys. There we go. Um, here in Nebraska, and this is not in every state, but some other states do have this as well. We do have um, a certification program for librarians. And part of that certification program is um, either having a degree. There we go. And you can get a certain degree, um, depending on what your degree is, you get a certain certification level, and that's um, similar to what you're doing with schools. But if you don't have a degree and you're not able to go to library school, we have a thing called basic skills programs. And this is here in Nebraska, I'll preface that, be very clear. This is free for any Nebraska citizen who's interested in being a librarian or working in a library. And this is some of the basic courses, um, basic things that you might do um, in actual at a university, but done by us here at the Library Commission. Um, they're generally two weeks or month courses um, of just learning the basics. So for someone who is, I'm a very small town, I'm the librarian 20 hours a week, and I'm the postmistress the other 20 hours a week. I just need to know the basics and I know hardly anything. Here's where you can get some of the basic instruction and education about what does it take to do that without having to go and take a whole library um, program. So I think this would help answer that person's question about what about non-librarian credentialing, what about learning about this? And it's just being a, getting a degree is not something for me, it's just not gonna happen and I'm not, but I just need to know how to do my job. So we have this available, <coughs> excuse me, here in Nebraska. Um, some other states do have credentialing um, or certification programs. Just It's not a national program. Each state does it state by state. There's nothing national dictating this to us or <coughs> dictating the certification programming to us. Each state library decides what they'll do and, and how it works. So check with your state to see if they may have something like this for you. Um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Not a frog in my throat. Um, also, it's another way to get your feet, you know, vet wet. If you're just really not sure, or like I said, you're in a really rural area, or something is just I don't have. There's no way I have the money for anything. This is something that could help you figure out if it's what you want to do. Let's see. All right, any other last minute questions uh, before we wrap up? I don't see any ones that came in, just some thank yous, great presentation, have a great afternoon. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. um, did we get Heather Dormer, did we get her question answered? It, she has a little question mark. Yeah, she was the one who asked about what if um, you're already working and don't have a degree, what's the best degree Perfect. to start with? That's the one okay, that, great. yep, that, yep. Great. Oh, there's Thank another you, Krista, for letting us be on today. This was wonderful. Yeah. Yes. Um, just more thank yous, thank yous. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is great. Um, I, as 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 Sarah said at the beginning, we are all very um, feel strongly about getting education, um, becoming librarian in whatever way you can, um, and being able to provide the good um services to the people in your community whether your community is your public library your academic library your school um and whatever education you can um get for that um the the programs through the um, universities um, go out and and learn and, and become good librarians <laughs> um okay i was gonna say somebody had a question but now they're gone <laughs> Oh yeah, they're they're saying just thank you, thank you, and, and then logging off. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Alrighty. 
All right. So um, I think then since nobody's asking me that's um we'll wrap it up officially. Um you guys will have all the contact info for everyone you need to, depending on which program you might be interested in. Um this will all be included in the links and the recordings afterwards. As I said, I'm gonna show you over here. Um back to our Encompass Live page. Um, the recording, our archives are right here. These are upcoming shows. Our archives, a link is right here underneath those. Most recent ones at the top of the page. So today's will be there, should be up by uh, the end of the day tomorrow. Um, and you'll have a link to the recording, a link to the slides, which within those slides have links to everything that um, our presenters were talking about today. Everybody who attended this morning's um, show and registered for today and didn't attend, uh, we'll receive an email from me letting you know when the recording's ready. Um, we also will post it up onto our various social media. We do have a Facebook page for Encompass Live, so if you'd like to use Facebook, you can um, pop over there and give us a like. We do reminders. Here's a reminder about logging into today's show, when um, information about our speakers, when our recordings are available. We post about that. So um, if you do um, like Facebook, give us a like over there. We also post on Instagram and Twitter, and we have this NCOMP Live as the hashtag for our show, so you can look for that everywhere um, to see what we're doing, or just keep on our page. Um, I'll mention here while we're on the archive page, there's a search feature here, so you can search our previous shows to see if there's any topics of um, interest to you. Uh, you can do the full archives or just the most recent 12 months. That is because this is the full archives for the entire history of Encompass Live, and I'm not going to scroll all the way down because it would be crazy. Um, the show premiered, our show premiered in January 2009, so we have over, and all of our recordings are here, so over 10 years worth of recordings are here, which is a lot. So search for topics, but um, I'll, I'll give a warning. Pay attention to the original broadcast dates of any of these sh historical shows. Um, some information will stand the test of time, reading lists, things like that, but uh, some things may change. Services and products may no longer exist anymore. They've may have changed completely in what they offer. Links might be broken or not exist anymore because it's so old. Um, but we are librarians. We keep things for archival purposes, for history, and we will always keep them up here as long as we have a place to host them. Right now, it's all on our YouTube account. Um, so just pay attention to that original broadcast date when you are watching anything on our archives. So, so that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, I hope you join us next week when our topic is board games. Yes, a fun set topic. Fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Engagement with soft skills. It's not just playing board games, but uh, using board games at the library. Uh, George Bergstrom, who's from um, the Indiana State Library, or the library, State Library, will be joining us to talk about how to do this at your library, using them not just as um, to uh, just get hand out and circulate, but for um, more engagement. So please do sign up for that show and any of our other upcoming shows. Got a couple of March dates on here already, and um, you'll see more of them fill in there as I confirm um, presenters. So um, sign up for anything else you see there. Uh, than that, thank you everybody for attending. Thank you, Dr. Pasco, who's left, <laughs> uh, Dr. Henning, Dr. Churchill for being with us here today. Um, this is great, and hopefully we'll get a lot more librarians in the field. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you guys very much. Bye-bye. Krista. -bye.